All right, welcome you guys, and today we'll be talking about rational functions and their graphs. Okay, so here's some definitions and terminology, especially some that you will see in uh, calculus and everything, especially non-removable discontinuities and removable discontinuities, okay? All right, and especially continuism. I mean, it just it is always going to show up in higher level maths and everything. Okay, now the point of discontinuities we talk a lot about in Algebra 2, and rational functions we've definitely talked quite a bit about last time. So let's, without further ado, let's go to Desmos and just see exactly what this stuff looks like. All right, now here we actually have several different types of rational functions, and I'm going to talk about each one and the points of discontinuity and continuity with them. So, okay, this one right here would have no points of discontinuity. This is called a continuous graph. Uh, the reason being is that, uh, and we'll talk more about it in a sec, is that there's no number that I can plug in here that will make this a false type of graph. Okay, now normally this graph should start over here and then continue downwards and go on forever and then do the same thing over here but we can't get negative values out of it because we're squaring each one so you have to think about that so now if I change this to a third power then we can actually start getting some negative values out of here but for right now it's just a two okay all right, so this has no points of discontinuity. Now, uh, cotton, continuous graphs are graphs where you can take your pencil and draw the graph without having to pick it up. Okay, in other words, on Desmos, you can drag it and not have it skip over some major parts. Okay. All right, now this one actually has what is called a removable discontinuity. Now it looks like a normal graph and you're probably asking yourself, well shoot, why didn't we just have a graph where it's just x plus 3? Because these two parts will cancel out. That is true and normally if we did have that graph in the beginning. But for right now, the computer knows to do this, but then it has one part where it actually stops and it says, hey, we need to have something. Now you can't see it on this graph as well, but if I line up over the point, the removable point of discontinuity, okay, all right, that would be negative two. And as you can see, I have a hole here. So this is what the graph should actually look like, but because it's so infinitesimally small until I get to the exact nature of negative two, it's not going to actually appear unless I run my mouse over it, okay? All right, so if you, when you're working on rationals, you are factoring, and then you can actually simplify by canceling a couple of them out. We don't call them canceling, but we call them simplifying to one, but sooner or later we all get lazy and start calling it canceling. Okay, uh, whenever, whatever you cancel is called a removable discontinuity, and it leaves a, what we call a hole. Okay, so you have to be careful about holes very important right there. Alright, now what if we just have a simple graph that looks like this, okay? X plus 4 over X minus 2. As you notice, I can't simplify anything to ones, I don't cancel anything by the old wordage, okay? This right here is called a removable discontinuity, this X minus 2 or X being at 2. So for example, if I were to actually draw a graph, and you could literally type it in X equals 2, and it automatically becomes a slider. Okay, it's almost like an invisible line that both branches of the rational function run up against but never cross. So it's really interesting how it works that way. Okay, now this is not the simple vertex form what we talked about last time, but this is still a graph nonetheless that actually has worth. Okay, all right, and uh, to know how to get this actual line right here and to get the other lines, I'll teach you that one in a sec. Okay, but once again, okay, if you can plug in any number, there is no discontinuities and it's a continuous graph. Okay, if you can't plug in certain numbers, like for example, on this one, we can't plug in a negative 2. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, there is a certain reason why we can't plug in a negative 2. Okay, now if we plug in a negative 2 as a whole, okay, not only is it because we factored out, but because... If I plug in a negative 2, this bottom part becomes 0, and I'm now dividing by 0, which is an impossibility. So I have to be very careful how I work with it, okay? On this one, if I plug in a 2, I'm going to get an impossibility because 2 minus 2 is 0. So dividing by 2, again, an issue, huge issue, 
Okay, so these two would be examples of discontinuity. Even though the first one doesn't seem like it, when you actually go to two, you would actually find an undefined point. Okay, something that looks like what I'm trying to hold on to right here. Okay, so discontinuous, this one is continuous. Okay, all right, now back to rational functions. Okay, uh, now if you notice, I was able to draw a straight line up and down at x equals, I believe it was, yeah, it was two. Uh, that kind of deflected the two branches off of each other. So right now what we will be dealing with, let's go to red, is how to get those lines. So these are going to be the vertical asymptotes and these are going to be the lines that go up and down. Okay, these are imaginary, they're dotted, don't even pretend. If you were to draw them in Desmos you could, but I'd highly recommend not to do it unless you really needed to see it. Okay, define the vertical asymptote set the denominator equal to zero and solve for x after you have simplified everything in other words after you have found the holes then you're well then you that's so fantastic that I can s speak the language that I know my bad you guys okay then your asymptotes are x equals whatever you solve for this is also a non-removable discontinuity degree on the bottom must be bigger for this to work okay all right, now horizontal asymptotes. If the degree in the numerator is smaller, then our horizontal asymptote is automatically y equals zero. And yes, you do need the y equals or the x equals whatever. Okay, so that's pretty simple. And this is HA, and I would obviously call this one VA. And it's not just Veterans Affairs. Okay, all right, now if the degree in the numerator is bigger, then there is no horizontal asymptote. And I always get confused on that, so please understand you need to be very careful with these rules. And these rules are located in your book, whatever book you have. All right, All right. so if the degrees are the same, then we have what is called a horizontal asymptote of y equals a divided by b, where a is the coefficient up top and b is the coefficient below. So let's take a look at some examples here. All right, so uh, let's take a look at this equation, y equals x squared plus x minus 12 over x squared minus 4. Okay, so first, factor the top and bottom. So, and how I'm able to type in here is I type in quotation and I can actually do it. So the top part actually factors into x minus 3, x plus 4. Simple as that, okay? Now the bottom, oops, let's go down factors, that's a difference of perfect square, so that's x minus 2 and x plus 2. Okay, So as we can see in this, nothing is going to be whole, so nothing is a removable discontinuity. Everything's going to be a non-removable discontinuity, okay, or an asymptote in this case. Now if we also look at the degrees, the degrees are the same. Okay, so there's going to be some interesting stuff happening there. So let's go ahead and graph this. Well, actually, let's go ahead and take a look at what the vertical asymptotes are going to be. All right, so the vertical asymptotes would be if I set these equal to zero. So if I set that equal to zero, and I set this one equal to zero, okay, I would definitely find out that the, uh, the vertical asymptotes would be x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. Okay, so that one's pretty simple. Now the degrees on top and bottom are the same. Okay, so they're the um, when that happens, we're going to take the coefficient in front. So this is like a one and a one. So that's the coefficients in the front. So the horizontal asymptotes, okay, horizontal asymptotes are going to be y equals one divided by one, which is just one. Okay, so when I predict and graph this, I should be looking at something that doesn't happen here. Okay, now if you actually had to graph this by hand, what I strongly recommend is do this. Is test to see what points, where the points are going over to the left of uh, negative 2. And then when you get to that point, go in between 2 and negative 2 and see where those points are doing. And then if you had to graph by hand again, see what the points and test a couple of points by plotting or using the the table to actually get it okay and just testing with it but until then you know I would just say just work with it as is so I'm going to go ahead let's go to it and voila magnifique here we go okay and as you can see if I put in the actual graphs and everything 
Let's put in y equals 1. That seems to match up with what I need. Uh, let's put in x equals 2. And let's put in x equals negative 2. Okay, and as you can see, the asymptotes seem to line up pretty well with everything I need. Okay, now is it going to be as close as I'd like down to this bottom part of this actual graph? No, but once again, I don't need it to be exact. Okay, All right, and that's actually how you find vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes. Pretty easy. Just make sure you factor, then you find the horizontal and vertical asymptotes and just work with it that way. Okay. All right, that is it for our work. I will talk to you guys later. Bye. All right, now I did want to talk about uh, this. If the degree in the numerator is bigger than there is no horizontal asymptote, what do we do then? We have this thing called, I like to call it a slant asymptote, uh, but I do know that people sometimes call it oblique, and I believe you're some books call it that or bleak asymptote okay all right and so to actually find the equation okay what you do is divide top by bottom and y equals the new factored form. Okay? So like for example if I had my actual equation to be y equals uh, let me see where was the example? There it is. Let's say that it was 6x squared uh, plus 1 okay and it would be over <laughs> there we go it would be over 3x, 3x, yeah, it would be over 3x, and that's not 6x to the first, that should be 6x squared. Okay, let's move that, let's change that to a 2, I don't know why I didn't type that in earlier like it should have been. Okay, so what you do is you do your long division. Okay, so just like what we did last year, or during the, uh, the actual division part. Uh, we got 6x squared plus 1. Okay, so what do I need to multiply 3x by to get here? Well, first off, I need to have this to be plus 0x to get there. Okay, so what do I need to multiply 3x by to get 6x squared? I need to multiply that by 2x. Okay, so I put the 2x here. 2x times 3x is 6x squared. Okay, and if you remember, during long division we always subtract. Okay, and so I'm left with just a remainder of 1. Okay, the remainder doesn't matter as much, but what actually matters is this part right here. So, as usual, I would set up for the vertical asymptote vertical asymptote would be x equals 0 because 3x equals 0 that would be there. Slant asymptote would be y equals 2x okay and that would be the asymptote that crosses into that part okay.